All right, friends, this is it. The most important team analysis and week for us in the TBU. We're facing off against Anima and the Golden State Dragons. Anima and I have battled many times in the past. They've always been incredible. Always been intense matches that have come down to the wire, you know? And, um, you know, we've battled each other so many times now and such in-depth battles. We kind of learned a lot about how each other plays, but in a format like this, you can't... You can't really go too much on prior knowledge. I mean, people can be really unpredictable, and she can be the queen of unpredictable when she wants to be. And I'm not exactly Captain Standard either, so this this is a very hard week. Very hard week to predict, but a very, very important week, and I'm just so nervous. So nervous. And I can't, I can't afford to lose. It's, we need this win, and we've prepped. We've prepped accordingly. Uh, so first of all, let me uh, tell you what I am going to bring, and then I'll tell you what I think she's going to bring, and that's how this is going to break down. <laughs> right, so first of all, we have Juvia the Vaporeon. Uh, standard leftovers, uh, Vaporeon, uh, pretty much smoke on spread, honestly. Uh, full defense, 172 HP, a little bit of spadef just to take certain moves that maybe a Draco, etc. From Latios, a little bit better. Uh, we have Wish, because it's fucking Wish, and this battle is going to be long. Battles with Anima are rarely short. Unless you get thoroughly whopped. Um, toxic, because Toxic is going to be quite important in this battle. We need to wear things down. Um, we're going to need to hope and pray that chip damage from things like Life Orb and Switches and Rocks and Toxic can wear her down enough that we can get some kind of sweep on the go. That's basically our only chance of winning against uh, against a team like Animas with a coach like Anima behind them. Uh, so we've got Scald, because it's, it's Scald, guys. What else am I going to put offensively on this sort of Aquarium? Yeah, I don't need to explain this. And plus a Burn or Mega Metacham, if situation arises where we get the chance to fire off a scald on that monster that would be beautiful thoroughly beautiful and protect because toxic and wish so <laughs> there is no there is no question uh, zappy bird zappy bird has been in basically every battle i think maybe there's been one or two he hasn't made an appearance because he's amazing zapdos is one of the best pokemon there is i do not care what anybody says zapdos is legendary he can run such a variety of things that he can keep your opponent guessing in a format like this that can be the upper hand that you need. Um, I am bringing the predictable tailwind this week. Uh, wait, why does this say choice scarf? You are, you are not, you are not choice scarf. You are leftovers. You are leftovers. Why would I make you choice scarf with tailwind? Uh, even I am not that. Even I am not that stupid. Nearly used a very NPC word there. Not gonna do that. <laughs> um, right. So anyway, yes, yes. And let me just check this real quick. Oh yeah, hello, hello. Everything's recording. All good. Jolly good. Uh, yes, so we have Defog because uh, rocks are going to be a really big pain in the ass for us. We have two rocks weaknesses and the chip damage just isn't something we need, especially when we predict such a long battle. Vault Switch because we're going to need the momentum. As long as we get rid of the damn Hippowdon, we can Vault Switch to a Heart 10 and that will... On a bulky mod like this, especially if you can Wish Pass and then Vault Switch out after Tailwind, etc, etc. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's nice. And Heat Wave is basically there for Buy Sharp, honestly. Heat Wave is there for Buy Sharp and potentially Tangler, although why Tangler would want to come in on this thing, I do not know. Uh, we are running full physical defense on this thing, 252-252 with 4 inch attack, just so we can do a teeny smidge more damage. Uh, next up, Rose Raids, and this time we're going for an Assault Vest Rose Raid, um, the reason being... Uh, that I want to be able to switch this thing in on things like um, what's the name of the mon, the name of the mon guys, that pocket monster. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to switch into a Romatisse. I mean, if a Romatisse is carrying a super effective move, for instance, HP fire, something like that, uh, it'd be nice to be able to switch into it. Um, what? I had a really good reason for this. Come here, come to me. No, 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 that's the wrong thing. I know how to use shell down. Chow down. Chow, chow, chow down. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Slim Jim. The Slimmest of Jims. Of course. Slim Jim and uh, Heliosk as well. I am so stupid. I don't even know why I do my own things. Uh, right, so, Rose Raids. Basically, Heliosk is a threat. Heliosk is a massive threat. A huge pain in my ass. Um, it'd be really nice to be able to switch into Vault Switches and get, take basically no damage. Uh, Hidden Power Ices are going to be another thing. We can still take one of those, I think. <laughs> Maybe one. Uh, if we're under Tailwind as well, we can ask speed to get some serious damage off of the Giga Drain. Uh, let's see. Yes, so, Assault Vest. We wanted that bot. We have enough speed to outspeed a jolly by shot. Uh, and then to get HP Fire off and get that KO on that monstrous beast. Uh, unless, of course, it's carrying Sucker Punch. But with this massive HP investment, it cannot OCO us with Sucker Punch. Uh, unless it's, I believe, Bandit can. Can it? I think it can. I think, yeah, Bandit can. 
but I don't think she's going to bring Bandit. That's not what I'm feeling for this week. We have Shadow Ball, because as I stated in the draft, actually, Anima has a moderate uh, Shadow Ball weakness. It's, um, it could be a real threat, especially if we get it late game. Some of them are weakened that are weak to it, like Mega Medicham, for instance. Um, but we aren't outspeed of Mega Medicham unless um, she brings something weird. You know, <laughs> unless she brings something crazy that, uh, you know, isn't max speed, has extra ball. But honestly, I wouldn't put it past her. Um, I, I did devise some scenarios whereby a bulkier Medicham would actually work in her favor. But I don't know. I don't know. Medicham is all about that speed and power, am I right? Am I right? I think I'm right. So Giga Drain, because we're going to need the recovery, especially if we're going to be taking a lot of damage with switching in. Hidden Power Fire for Buy Shop, Sludge Bomb for coverage, and also for the potential poison, which is always nice. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, the what didn't go into HP and outspeeding the Buy Shop went into Special Attack. Happy days. Triple Triad, anybody that gets a reference, is a legend and I love you forever. Uh, the Hydreigon, now this is a bit of a... Bit of a crazy set for me to use. Shout out to Tushardi who really helped me with this Hydreigon actually. Um, yeah, bulky Hydreigon. Stallbreaker Hydreigon. Um, taunt to prevent rocks, to prevent setting up, things like that. Roost because one on one we can take on a lot of Anima's bulky mons with Roost and leftovers on this thing with this spread. Earth Power because it is the best coverage move we can have. Um, completely, I don't want a Dragon type move honestly um, with the potential for a Remitisse. And then there's also the fact that coverage-wise, Earth Power is better against her team. Uh, yeah, that was definitely the way to go in Dark Pulse because it covers the same Mon that Shadow Ball does um, with Rose Raid. So yeah, we take advantage of that weakness twice, which is bloody glorious. Um, what are we speed creeping with the 132? What did we speed creep? I can't remember. But it was a thing. It was a very important thing. But there's some speed creeping going on there. Definitely. Calrissian is not a very surprising set at all. It's just standard naive rock polish set with knockoff and earth power and sludge bomb. Not really much to explain there. Life orb, sheer force. It will tear holes through teams as a chance to oko a few scary ass mon. Um, the problem is against Animus team with things like Greninja and um, the, the the Golden State Dragon. Heliolisk, that's the guy. Uh, with, with, thing, with Mon like him there, and well, them there, we're not gonna. Mm, we're in a very unfortunate speed tier. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say on that one. And so we're gonna have to play cleverly, if, if it's possible for me to do such a thing, um, in order to utilize Calrissian to his best potential. But there is a chance, there is a small chance, that we'll be able to get some serious Okos with this guy if the situation is right. Last but not least on our part is the ever present. I don't think we have left him out once. Maybe once. Registeel, absolute monster of a mon. Can take hits left, right, and center on both sides. Doesn't do so well against um, fighting type moves from Mega Metachem or fighting type moves in general from a powerful attacker, uh, especially Stab. But it can take those hits for days, especially with lefties there. Glorious. Um, bulky mon plus Toxic plus Rocks. Brick Break is there because I expect her to bring. Well, I'm, I'm really scared of her bringing screens. I think that Latios with screens is a possibility. I think either screens, maybe Scarf. Maybe Scarf. It depends really. It depends on her team composition. But I think those are going to be the two options she's going to go for. Um, so with that in mind, Brick Break to get rid of screens, Iron Head to stab, damage, awesomeness. I don't think there's even a chance we'd ever, maybe under, under Tailwind, we'd outspeed some things and get the chance to get a flinch with Iron Head. Uh, rocks because Rocks and Toxic because Roxic is nice residual damage. So that's our team. That's our preparation. Let me know what you guys think of that in the comment section. Let me just run you through what I think Anima is bringing. By the way, guys, how rude of me. If you guys don't know who Anima is, her links, of course, will be in the description. Um, if you know me and you don't know her, I don't know where you've been. I don't know I don't know what you did. Why do you just go on YouTube and look at cats and me? Just cats and me. Because that must be what it is if you don't know who she is. Um, go and check her out. Fantastic battler. Great commentator. She's a fantastic spud. <laughs> Get it? Commentator. Uh, yeah, so she's she's a great, great girl, uh, absolutely fantastic battler, really great commentator, and she's one of my favourite people actually, so yeah, if that's not enough of an endorsement, then I don't know what is, alright? So go and check her out, glorious woman. So, Anima's TBU anal. Raising. I think, I, I really strongly think Scarf Greninja. Scarf Greninja would be an excellent thing to have for her. She could lead with it if she expects a Landorus lead. She could lead with it if she expects us to lead with, maybe, Stormbreaker High Dragon. If she expects us to lead with Zappy Bird, she could lead with it. A lot of our leads are Scarfed Greninja. It's a fantastic counter lead because with a lot of them, she could just go for any of these moves. Even Registeel, if she expects us to go for Rock straight away, she gets super effective stab damage on so many of our mon with these three moves right here. And if she's at a disadvantageous matchup, U-turn. I really feel Scarf Greninja is gonna be a thing. Uh, Mega Metachamp, 
Uh, standard spread Omega Meta Champ. Also standard spread on Greninja. Uh, standard spread Omega Meta Champ. But the moves. I feel she's going to bring Drain Punch over High Jump Kick because Anima likes to play the long game and she likes to be clever. She likes to come in. She likes to be able to switch in, take a hit, or potentially not Oko Amon, take a hit, get that health back, and then KO them with a two hit KO. You know, she likes to play clever and Drain Punch allows her more scope to play cleverly and it's a lot less risque as well. Ice Punch is going to be there for the Landorus. Uh, possibly Rose Raid as well, if she expects us to have Shadow Ball or something like that. Zen Headbutt also for the Rose Raid um, and just stab. Um, anything that she wants to hit with stab that she doesn't have a super effective move for otherwise or that resists Drain Punch like maybe Calrissian uh, although why she wouldn't go for Ice Punch I don't know but I just think Zen Headbutt's a thing and also she might try and go for flinches which is it could come down to flinches at the end of the day Anima and I we have incredible battles we have crazy battles that go on for a long time and it could well come down to a that lucky flinch not that she plays that way but I think we've all been backed into a corner when we pray for a flinch, really, haven't we? Even the most noble of battlers. Um, I think Hippowden's going to be in the team, because why the fudge wouldn't it be, really? Uh, Hippowden is an absolute specially defensive monster. It's probably going to have Sandstream. Uh, she does only have one Mon apart from Hippowden immune to Sandstream. But she's got... She doesn't have a lot of bulk, actually, now that I think about it. But why would you bring Sand... She might well bring Sandforce, actually. Scratch that. I think she's going to bring Sandforce, which makes her less likely to be Spadef, which I expect her to be. Um, but I think she might well bring Sandforce now that I think about it, because she doesn't want to be doing that residual damage to her own team, especially when she knows our games go on for so long. Uh, so Leftovers, of course, I think Slack Off, because she's going to be taking a lot of damage switching this thing in regularly. Earthquake, because it will do wonders against Torkoal, it will do wonders against Registeel, it will do wonders against Vaporeon. Well, actually, not wonders. Uh, especially if she expects our spread. Um, but yeah, it can do some decent damage to a lot of things. Uh, Stealth Rock, because she needs the rocks, let's be freaking honest here. Like, everybody everybody in this format should have Stealth Rock, unless they're just going full hyper offense. Um, yes, and Whirlwind, because anyone in their right mind would be terrified of Landorus setting up. In fact, we've got a couple of setup mon, but mainly Landorus setting up. So, um, maybe, maybe she'll expect us to set up with Vaporeon or um, the word Zapdos and try and bat and pass, in which case she could switch in Whirlwind, um, or stay in and Whirlwind, um, or take a hit from Calrissian, unless of course we're using Calm Mind and not Rock Polish, go for a Whirlwind, and it's all good times. It's all absolutely good times for her. She, that would be a perfect move for her to be packing. Next up is Bioshop. Oh, by the way, the Hapowden is going to be especially defensive, Max, the things, um, and with four in attack because of stuff and reasons and stuff because of Earthquake and things, even though it's only one attack, but still. Now... This is where things get tricky. She could run a lot of things on Bisharp. An absolute metric but ton of things. Um, but I am predicting the most likely would be a sub sword stance. She's got a few things she could safely switch Bisharp in on. If she gets a sub up, gets a sword stance up, especially with the lefties there, multiple chances for substitutes. Let's just say there are not many things in my team that can take a low kick sucker punch combo. You know, nothing really wants to switch into a plus two sucker punch. Well, they can't switch into one. You know what I mean? Uh, no one wants to switch into a plus two low kick, really. Um, uh, even Zappy Bird, plus two low kick. I'm not going to appreciate it too much. I mean, it's probably, what does it do? About 15, 20%? Which doesn't sound like a lot, but then when you've got to take a plus two sucker punch afterwards, eh, I, mean, I know we can play the Roost Mind games, or we can't, but she might expect that. And we've got leftovers, etc. But still, still, it's a very scary mod. And I think if she gets rid of the things that can check this, <laughs> Sub Swords then Spy Shark can do some serious damage. Uh, I think she'll completely ditch Iron Head, honestly. It doesn't have a lot of use against our team, except against Gramble. Um, I do think she might possibly run in a focus over Defiant. It depends what she's more afraid of, Lock Honey or Gramble. Neither of which we're bringing, but she doesn't know this. Um, if she's more afraid of Lock Honey, she'll bring in a focus, maybe expecting us uh, to expect her to switch out and go for a fake out, um, in which case she could get a move off. Uh, Defiant, if she expects Gramble, so she can get that stat boost. I'm really not 100% sure on that one. Uh, yeah, so bulky, max tech, max HP, foreign defense, happy birthday. And that is by Sharp. Latios is another one that I'm very dubious about. As I said earlier, I think it's either going to be a screen setter or a scarfer, two diametrically opposed types of sets. Impossible to prepare for both on, uh, you know, with one counter. Very, very tricky, but I do think that support would avail her better. Um, I think she's going to be more on the defensive side because this spread here would allow her to take the knockoff from a standard. Rock Polish, uh, Landorus Incarnate, less than 50% damage. And that means that she'd be able to get two hits off, two Psy Shocks or two Dracos off of a Landorus. And even with a defensive spread like this, uh, with the AE in Spatak as well, she's going to two hit KO Landorus. Um, so yeah, yeah, happy days. 
This is a perfect spread for her, I feel, with the default to get rid of rocks, because otherwise she'll have to bring Starmie and Starmie and Slim Jim. I don't think she wants to be messing around with no electric weakness with Zappy Bird. Um, even though she could do some serious damage with an Ice Beam, but Zappy Bird could take an Ice Beam, even from her to Specs. Um, Greninja if it was specially defensive, which I am known to run and is quite a common set actually. Um, yeah, so I think Light Screen because we have a lot of prominent special attackers which threaten her. Um, Psy Shock for the Lopunny, um, especially if she's Scarfed, especially if she's Scarfed. Draco Meteor for damage and for the two uh, Dragon types. And she'll be able to take a Draco, I believe. If we're not Spec, she'll be able to take a Draco under Light Screen from either of our Dragons. Uh, and Oko with Draco Meteor. Um, I don't know if she can Oko our High Dragon spread. I think she can. I remember calculating it, but I can't remember the outcome. I will do that again. Um, but yeah, this I think she's going to bring in a more defensive Latios with Light Screen or a Scarfa. Hmm. Now, something which is going to be a real bane in this battle: Dry Skin Heliolisk. That means we are not free in any way, shape, or form to fire off Scalds and try and get a burn on something, especially Mega Meta Chan um, with Juvia. Uh, because she can just come in, get free recovery, or completely negate the damage, and then she's free to Thunderbolt, Bolt Switch, whatever she wants. I think she's going to be modest, because the thing she needs to outspeed, she outspeeds without being jolly. And that's how Don fucked up, which I probably did. But yeah, as far as I can tell, as far as I research, her being jolly is oh, timid, isn't too advantageous to her in this battle. Um, I think she's going to have Hidden Power Ice, in case we switch in Lander with some potential electric attack. Uh, I also think it would avail her well against Rose Raid. Um, it would also avail her well if she doesn't want to go for a Focus Blast, if she doesn't want to risk it, uh, it would avail her well against... No, no, that was in Power Fire I was thinking of. Uh, yes, so it was also good against Zappy Bird, because Zappy Bird can't do much to this thing. Yeah, so I think Hidden Power Ice, Thunderbolt, if she doesn't want to go for Volt Switch, if she wants just powerful stab damage without having to switch out, Focus Blast for Registeel, and max the things that this thing has max. And this is the team I feel she's going to bring. Um, right, so that is it. The most important week for us in the TBU. We have the slimmest of gyms, the slimmest of margins to uh, make it into the playoffs. If we manage to win here and get a moderately decent win, we have a chance. We have a small chance of making it into the playoffs. We've had an abysmal season. Honestly, I've played really badly. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, there are times when I've played moderately well. There are times when I possibly should have won and Hax has screwed me over. Possibly should have won and my own stupidity has screwed me over. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we, we have not played our best. This is when we're going to be bringing, hopefully, our A game. Because Anna is an amazing opponent and I cannot underestimate her. And we need it. We need it. <laughs> we really need it. Um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think of this preparation. Let me know if you think it's going to be enough. Let me know if you think we're going to make it to the playoffs. And let me know if you think that this is an accurate prediction. Thank you guys for watching this video, really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of everything in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the channel. Let me know what you'd like to see me bring to the channel. I do want to start making more content again. I'm really sorry that I haven't been. For those of you who still stick by me, it means so much. Uh, yeah, have yourselves this is awesome day. Go and check out the TBU and all the coaches, and especially my opponent for this week, because I like to think that I give them a little bit of special attention every week. Why am I doing a booty caress right now? That's just weird. Goodbye.